Hello and good morning. Today marks off a new week for the vlog. Keep this painting behind me. How is this my classroom? Like it's literally gorgeous, but also who is this? You know, can someone tell me like, who is this woman and why is she here? Do we have a sconce, a candle sconce, but like the brotherhood. Also, does anyone know, have any facts about this painting? Like the brotherhood of what? This feels so culty to me. Watch it be like some very sacred thing that I'm just like totally shitting all over. What else do we got? Some more paintings. Ferrelli. I am just so honored that this is my classroom. Okay, here we go. Harry Edmonds, first director of International House. New York chapter, there he is. I hope they bless my teaching abilities. Also, why is this? This is kind of creepy, don't we think? I don't know, I'm just like seeing all these old people in frames kind of freaks me out a little bit. this. Oh my gosh. This gorgeous view just out of What do we got here? Eagle carved in stone. Yo, that's sick. We love that. Scones, scones. Another man. Here we have Grant's tomb over there. But this is my classroom. Look at that chandelier. Wait, OMG, I just noticed that there's like a secret door behind this. Why is that low key the most terrifying thing I've ever seen? in my life. Wait, why is this so creepy? What is this? Oh my god. You guys, why do we have a secret kitchen? I mean, I'm sure it's not like super secret. People probably know about it. Bro, that just freaks me out. But look at that. It looks like it's like a hidden door. Anyway, time for me to get my desks or my chairs set up the way I like them to. Or to me students. Should we do a fit check real quick? Here's the fit, okay. Nice little shirt, little slats with all my AF1s on, cause hi, hello, we live in the AF1s, you know what I'm saying? But look at her. She's giving professor, she's giving profesh, profesh, profess. Say that 10 times. Sally sells C cells by the Thethor. Time to get going and teach this class one of my favorite books. <laughs> done. We talked about Heartberry. Once again, I am reminded at how little Americans know about residential schools. It's honestly crazy to me. Like, it's almost as if when you live outside of Canada, you exist in this space where you think Canada is just like this amazing place where there's no racism or injustices at all. And it's amazing how many times I have literally had to educate people on these history. There is so much work that needs to be done in America in terms of understanding indigenous history and the cultural genocide and honestly even just genocide period that happened. I'm happy that I have the knowledge and the experience to be able to speak on these issue, issues and also the strength to talk about them because not everyone can. It's a very triggering thing. It's difficult. One of my students had to like raise their hand and ask because in this book there's the word squaw and one of these students had to raise their hand and ask what this word meant. That was a harrowing moment, but you know, I'm glad for the question and I ended up telling this story about a year and a half ago. I was in upstate New York in Chautauqua. So I went into this little store. It was like a sandwich place. I forget what it's called. I'm sure I could figure it out, but I think it's like since <laughs> I think it has since shut down. Wait, that was cute. <laughs> anyway, and inside I walk in there and the names of the sandwiches, one was called the cheek, the other was called the squaw, okay? For those who don't know what that word means, it is a racial slur of it for indigenous women. It's an indigenous woman slur, racial slur. I did what I do. <laughs> And I ordered that sandwich and I laughed while I ate it because sometimes that's what we have to do is laugh through pain. It was a ham and cheese grilled sandwich. Why it was called the squaw, I don't know, but it was pretty fucked up. Even all the paraphernalia, I have pictures. I took pictures of it and so I'll include it on the screen. I 
telling that story in class. It feels like an educational class today because we're dealing with like cultural memoir. And in order to understand the text, we had to understand the cultural significance and the cultural trauma that we were grappling with within the text. Spoke a lot about residential schools, 60s scoop, the children who were taken, digging up the school sites, the children who died and who were essentially killed in these places. It makes sense why the students were a bit quieter today because I think they were more in a phase of taking in. But yeah, this was week four. Next week is our last week doing readings and then we jump into workshop. Yo, what up? Morning fam. Today we think we're gonna wake up to like a beautiful day. Look at what we got here, my friend. It is so fucking rainy. So apparently Ophelia, the hurricane, the remnants are coming for us. You can't really see how crazy it is. If I point this down to the street, literally the street, you can kind of see the water moving down there. And you know what's even wilder? Okay, so I had an appointment booked for my Brazilian. So I call the Brazilian place. I'm like, hey, you know, can I like reschedule because like hurricane stuff and it's flash flooding? And they're like, yeah, no worries, but we're just gonna have to charge you for 50% of the cost. Ma'am, it's a flash flood. Where is your compassion? We're gonna brave the rain because I'm not about to pay 50% of an $80 Brazilian for nothing. Wish me luck, my friends. And also, not only that, sorry, is my music really loud right now? I was just about to make my egg sandwich. Give it a little pause, yeah? I'm like low-key praying that work calls me and they're like, stay home, stay home, girl, because it's a flash flood. Because why? I'd rather be editing YouTube videos because that's fun for me. What's not fun is going outside in flash flood rains, little hurricane vibes, actions. No, thank you, ma'am, sir, people, grannies, little children. No, look at those ripples. <gasps> look at this brave human walking in the rain. I wanna like order some some pizza or some pasta and watch movies and veg out and have a nice relaxing time. Peep the sweatshirt. A lot of people were asking. I posted a, a story wearing this sweatshirt. Indian Girls Book Club, my friends. If you don't know what it is, you should know about it. I wrote an article about them. Kinsale Drake is the founder. She a homie, she a real one. But they have the cutest merch ever. So go buy your Indian Girls Book Club merch. Free plug for y'all because I love them. And they're doing great work. Doing great work. Maybe I'll vlog my way to the Brazilian place. I also don't want to pick up my camera, you know what I'm saying? You know? Egg sandwich time. And then it's time to brave the rain to go and get whacked. Already not a fun experience, but the things we do for beauty. Not even for beauty, man. Fuck beauty, but I just, I like it. That's all. Until we meet again. <laughs> Time to get a salad to fuel up because I've been eating too much pizza lately. Okay. okay, so I finished my workout class at Equinox. It's a circuit training class that I like to do that I'm absolutely obsessed with. It literally kicked my ass like nothing before. Um, and now I have a yummy salad, sweet green. <laughs> so yeah, this is my favorite one. It's called the Kale Caesar. I got a little spin drift action. It's pretty bomb. This is my favorite little healthy salad. But last night I had pizza with my friend Amber. So it was the new, or it was the full moon yesterday. So my friend Amber came over and we watched a couple episodes of Reservation Dogs, the newest season, because I haven't seen it yet. I've just been so busy. Then we ordered a Zob. And then we did a full moon releasing ceremony thing, which is always the funnest. So we each wrote down things that we wanted to let go of. And then we went up to my roof, like a couple of children of the moon, and burned our little papers. <laughs> Um, in the company of, what is it, a rose quartz, obsidian, and selenite. So we were just fully on our spiritual bullshit. And you know, like immediately after I felt so lighter and we just like had the best conversations. You know what I mean? It's like there's nothing better than just sitting with a friend on a couch and just talking about just different things that you've been feeling lately or making sense of things. You know, it was good. I felt lighter, even though we had a bunch of pizza. It's really great. And I think on Sunday we're gonna watch some more reservation dogs. And maybe tonight, maybe I'll treat myself and I'll go myself a little gelato for a nice little chocolatey hazelnut delight, you know what I mean? Hello 
saying good morning or more like good afternoon. Wait, it's not afternoon yet. Good, good day. So I'm on my way to go for dim sum with my friend Ian. Super excited. We're going to Chinatown. Super excited. I love dim sum so much and I haven't gone to a proper dim sum spot in New York yet. I've only ever ordered it like super hungover from some random ass places, but it should be good. Ian is such a gem. I met him at the, or through the Columbia writing program and it was honestly through him that I got the hookup for Huff Post and writing for Huff Post, which is super sick. Wait, okay, this park is so cute. Zoom up! You can see it way too all up in your shit, if you ask me. Um, but it's always amazing to me that like no matter how long you live here, you always discover new things and new areas. How, okay, how have I never been over in this area? Like it's so... It's nice over here. I feel like I'm entering a whole different world. Okay, so I just realized that I'm at the entrance of the Brooklyn Bridge, which is so funny because even though I've lived here for two and a half years, I've literally never gone, never done. I'm like, why is this so packed and so busy? But it's such a beautiful day here, honestly. Look at this. Supposed to be stunning all week. I absolutely love the fall here in the city. It's always been my favorite season, but back home, the fall literally only lasts like two weeks if we're lucky. Shout out Canada for that. All my Canadians, my northern girls, be knowing what I'm talking about. That's all, wow, okay. I see why the tourists come here, because it's nice. It is really nice. beautiful. I'm so glad I decided to get off at Park Place and walk because I have literally never been here before. It's giving Europe. It's also giving <laughs> Colombia. It's giving call and, call and aid. So I'm happy I'm taking y'all on this walk with me. to pivot because it's gonna be like 45 minute to an hour wait so we're going to this other place because we want to one of Ian's friend is doing this performance that we're gonna go check out so we need to quickly get in here but yeah okay Chinatown is so cute it's giving me it makes me feel like I'm over in Asia again which is a really nice feeling Afternoon time to hit the gym. Oh, let's cross the street real quick. I think I just fully ran a red light. It is Sunday, which means it's time to prepare for the week. 
So we're gonna do a little grocery shopping, a little meal preppy action to feel geared and ready to go for this new week. After I submitted my manuscript to my editor, I decided to take a two week break from writing, which means this week we're jumping right back into it. in New York. I'm gonna go read outside today, be outside as much as possible, go to the park. I don't know if you can hear that crackling right now, but I'm making shishito peppers, so it's kind of like brunch time. Today is a productive day, so I have a couple office hours. Look at my bed. I'm finally organizing above, so I'm taking out all of like my winter fall clothes, putting away my summer clothes, also making a pile for things that I want to either sell or give away to Goodwill. Just like really downsize because there's so many clothings that I have that, I mean, we all have it, like so many clothes that we just don't wear anymore. And especially with me thinking about moving to Europe next year, moving abroad, I really just want to downsize. So the lesser things I have, the better for my move. Oh my God, we gotta go check on the shishito peppers. So it's only 10.58, but we're blistering some mosquito peppers. I'm gonna have a little brunchy action by myself. I just had a wicked craving for these. With some sesame oil. I'm gonna put some, toss it with some sesame oil, some sesame seeds, and I'm gonna whip up this shrimp that I got from Trader Joe's. It's so yummy. It's like, what is it? Ginger garlic. Super scrumptious. So a little shrimp and shishito peppers. Sounds like a very delightful solo brunch action vibe today. Look at how gorgeous. How gorgeous these are. Like, oh, divine. A divine blistering. That's what we'll call this. You know, that was like a little greaser. And the shine. Shout out my vitamin C syrup. Syrup. <laughs> Shout out my vitamin C serum for giving me this little shiny glow. dish. Gorgeous. Stunning. I once dated a guy that said food is fuel and that's all it was and let me tell you I knew right then and there it was not gonna work. Mm. <laughs> food is a love language. <laughs> So good. I just had one office hours with the student and now I am on my way to have another office hours. Now that we're getting close to submissions where they're actually gonna be submitting their work, I think they have a lot of questions. Most of the feedback letters that they've been practicing with so far have been really strong. With first years, it can be difficult to transition from that high school level of writing to the university level of writing because in high school, so many high schoolers open up their essays. I don't know why I'm doing air quotes 
quotes, but they open up their essays with these really broad, vague statements like, I don't know, clouds in the sky provide shade or like whatever the hell, something super broad like that. And we have to, I have to teach them how to get away from doing that because that's just, we need specifics always. And so I think I'm realizing that some of them are still at that level, so we have to transition it to the elevated level where we're being very specific, we're avoiding cliches at all costs. I feel like undergrads, when they are giving responses to creative writing, so first of all, you have to be focused on the craft. Oftentimes what happens is students will romanticize their own interpretations of something and then put those romantics on the page which is just kind of clumsy and not direct not to the point not what is needed whatsoever this week in class i'm gonna be talking about that actually gonna pull a karen ball on them so karen ball is this professor that i had during my undergrad experience where <laughs> she literally picked out like paragraphs that us as students had written and she put it up on the board <laughs> and then dissected what was wrong about that and then positive ones. So I'm literally going to do the exact same thing because I'm not trying to like embarrass them or anything by any means and you know it'll all be anonymous. The way that we learn the best is through examples and seeing where we went wrong. Like it's important for us to see where we went wrong so then we know how to make it right moving forward. Okay, so that was proper cute meeting with a student. And this is why I do what I do because this is someone who's actually interested in publishing, wants to write a cultural memoir, which is obviously my specialty. It's nice to be able, oh my God, it's so bright. Maybe I'll wait into this. But it's nice to be able to in inspire people and have them talk about what they want to write and like consult me and for me to be in a position where I can share my knowledge and everything I've learned at this point in my life. It feels just really beautiful and really nice and something I'm super grateful for. All in all, it went well. Looking forward to class this week. I think it's going to be an auspicious week and then to jump into pages where we can actually talk about their writing. It's going to be exciting. So the office hours that I had with my student today, she was so sweet. She was saying how my class is her favorite class every week and how she really looks forward to it and how the readings have been so informative for her own goals as a writer, which filled my heart with joy because that's the whole point of teaching and that's the whole point of doing what I do. Hopefully help inspire young people to tell their stories, to tell their truths, especially when it's difficult truth. And then at the end of our meeting, she has to take a selfie together, which I thought was the cutest most wholesome thing ever. That's it. That's another week in the life with your girl, Shanna Marie Sage. Hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for another week in the life as a professor with me. Love you all. Thanks for watching. <laughs>